What's going on guys? Got another comic book haul video for you. I uh, picked up this first section of books, uh, first stack of books from the Comic Vault in Radcliffe, Kentucky. Uh, this was a Black Friday sale. Uh, I've talked about them before. They have a ton of long boxes there that they bring out for their dollar sales. Uh, so I thought that's what they were going to do for this one, but unfortunately they didn't. They didn't have any new stock to go through. It was just everything in their store was uh, anything 425 and under and their back issues was a dollar and then everything else was half off um, which ended up being good because the last I think every time I've been there except for the first time they've had one of those dollar sales and when they do those dollar sales with the uh, the old stock they just stack long boxes on their existing back issues so you can never get to the existing back issues you just dig through whatever they put out for that particular sale so uh, it actually worked out well because I got to dig through all their long boxes that I've never gone through before, uh, or at least almost a year now. So uh, I, was, I found a bunch of good stuff, so uh, I'll start going through it here. This first one is uh, Thunderbolts 121. This is just from that uh, Warren Ellis run. I think I only need one more to complete the run, and, uh, and then I'll be able to read it and see how I like it. So I was happy to find that. Next, we got Uncanny Avengers number 11. This is a uh, Jim Steranko variant. I, I like uh, Jim Steranko's art. I don't have any of his like iconic covers from the, the 60s and 70s, uh, unfortunately. Hope to get those one day, but uh, this one was kind of cool. I'd never seen this before. It's got Cap on there with uh, the Iwo Jima guys in the background. Um, so I was happy to find this. Next, you got Spawn 297. This is just a uh, run filler leading up to 300. I've got, I think I've got one copy of 300, but I didn't have this copy of 297, so I was happy to grab that. Another book from my childhood, this New Warriors number one. I had got the second printing a couple of, uh, months ago, but this is the uh, the first printing with this uh, orange background that pops with all the, uh, the old uh, Silver Age. Marvel Comics in the background, and um, this was a newsstand. It's not in a great shape, but uh, it was only a dollar, so I was really happy to find that. Next, we got G.I. Joe 227. This is the uh, subscription cover. It's got Cobra Commander on here doing his Napoleon thing. Uh, this cover jumped out at me. I, I remembered it, uh, seeing it, I think, in the, uh, the Key Collector app, their dollar bin. Uh, fine section. I scroll through that every now and then just to get an idea of uh, covers to hunt for. Uh, so this one jumped out at me and I remembered it being worth something so I grabbed it. Uh, otherwise it's just a really cool cover. Uh, Cobra Commander, you know, great villain, ridiculous, ridiculous man. So uh, him doing Napoleon, thing, his Napoleon thing makes a lot of sense. Uh, this one actually goes for, you know, any between 30 and 50 bucks I think. So I was happy to find that for a dollar, and uh, I think I'm going to hold on to this one, though. there was a, They had another copy that I left there, so uh, I might pick that one up the next time I'm down there, if it's still there. Next, you got Daredevil 11 from the, uh, this is the Volume 2 run. This is uh, from, what is it, Echo. This is her first appearance, that's her on the cover there. This is her first appearance as Echo. The first appearance is, uh, what's her name, Maya was in 9, she had a cameo in that, and then her first cover appearance was 10, and then I think this is her first appearance as Echo, so this has been heating up a lot uh, because of the, um, uh, the Hawkeye show that's going on right now, and Echo's going to get her own show, of course, so I'll probably hang on to this until the, uh, they start releasing footage and trailers for the Echo show to try to sell this. Uh, this one's going for anywhere between 30 and 40 right now, I think. Um, so, I was happy to find that for a dollar. Next, we've got Batman Ninja Turtles 3, Volume 3. This is Issue 6. I'm um, just trying to collect all these Batman Ninja Turtle, uh, the three volumes is here. So, uh, I was happy to pick up number 6. Pretty cool cover. Uh, it's not an Eastman cover. I'm not sure who it is, I can't tell from that signature, um, but I like it, it's got Batman there standing in the middle and uh, surrounded by the turtles, pretty cool. Next, we got Guardians of the Galaxy number 10, this is an Art Adams cover, it's 
Got Angela here on the front with, uh, I just noticed things down there too for some reason. And that might be either, I don't know if that's Black Panther or Agent Venom, I can't tell. Um, I know Venom was in the Guardians of the Galaxy for a while, but um, I got the usual Star Lord and Drax and Gamora and Rocket and Groot and everything and Angela on the cover there. So this is a pretty cool Art Adams cover. Uh, Mercenaut showed this on uh, one of his videos a couple weeks ago, so that's how I became aware of this. I don't think this goes for anything, but I'm an Art Adams fan, so uh, I was ha happy to find this for a dollar. Let's see, next stack we just got some Usagi you know, Jimbo run fillers. This is from uh, the Dark Horse run, so this is volume 2 or 3, I think. Uh, so we've got 145, 152, 154, and 156. So all those were a dollar. So I was happy to pick all those up. Just trying to fill up my Usagi run there. Uh, this next one, this was the only one that I paid more than a dollar for. This one was... This is 725, so it was about uh, 375, I guess. Uh, this is uh, Team and T number four from the Mirage, the second Mirage run. So this is volume four, I think, because it went Mirage, then uh, Image, then oh, who did it after that? Um, Dark? No, not Dark Horse. I can't remember. But this is from uh, the second. Mirage, second or third Mirage run. This is from the early 2000s, uh, June 2002. So these were really low printed. So anytime I can find these, uh, I don't mind paying uh, paying for those. And again, this was half price, so three dollars. So it was about cover price. It looks like it was a 2.95 book back in 2002. So um, I was not not mad about paying for that. Next, we've got Street Fighter 2, number 2. Now, this is volume 2 of Street Fighter 2, I think. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it's got Blanca and Chun-Li fighting on it. Not a great Blanca, but the Chun-Li looks pretty good. Definitely the, the anime style on this art. So, <clears throat> I'm picking up all these Street Fighter books every time I find them for cheap. So, I was happy to find that. Next, we've got Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, number six. This is a Dan Parent cover. Dan Parent does a lot of art for the, uh, the Archie series and a lot of the Betty and Veronica stuff. You can see that kind of cartoony style here. Um, so this one, I was happy to find this one for a dollar because I think last time I looked on eBay there was one, and the, the asking price was at least 60 bucks, I think. So there's no way I'm paying $60 for this, but for a dollar, I'll pick it up. Next, we got Raise the Dead number two, Raise the Dead two number three. Uh, this was uh, featured on a Modern Comic Mayhem show back around Halloween. They were talking about fun zombie books. And, we got the, uh, and they, they showed this on there. It was, uh, it's got the zombie grabbing the, the bikini bottom here. It's kind of like the, uh, the copper tone ad with, um, I can't remember what's grabbing that the kid's bathing suit, but that's kind of what this homage is. There's a, a Deadpool variant, too, with, uh, I think it's Jeff the Landshark grabbing Elsa Bloodstone, um, like this, and then uh, Deadpool back here. Um, but this one was uh, featured on there, so it goes for, I don't know, 10, 20 bucks, I think. So uh, I'll hold on to this for at least another year, maybe sell it around Halloween, see if I can get anything for it. Uh, next, found some early haunt issues. Uh, this is the Robert Kirkman, Greg Capullo uh, run. Uh, Capullo did the cover here. Um, so I was just getting just early haunt, trying to fill out, I think, up until around 20 or so. That's when uh, Capullo and Kirkman stopped. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, that's what I'm trying to get to, at least. I found number seven here. This is a McFarlane cover. This one goes for... Uh, maybe 30 40 bucks I think too um, so I was happy to find that one for a dollar and last haunt book this is number two and this is the, the third printing you can see that I didn't even know it was a third printing until I got it home and started looking at it um, I just picked it up because it was I didn't have this second issue of haunt and then saw it was a third printing so that's pretty cool 
again, it's a McFarlane cover. He did the covers for most of the early ones, so it's happy to find that for a buck. Alright. Next up to got a fun droopy book, a little cartoon book here. It's a droopy number three of three. Uh, it's almost Christmas time, so Santa's little helper on the cover there with Droopy and the uh, the wolf in the background. It's kind of funny. I had number number one of this. I got it back in the summertime. It was uh, that homage to that Batman cover. So I don't think this homage is anything. It's just Droopy looking very satisfied with himself sitting on uh, Santa's, not her lap, I guess, but her, uh, her the crook of her arm. So I loved the Droopy cartoon when I was a kid, so... Uh, I picked this one up. And there's only three of these issues. This one says, obviously, number three of three. So I've got one. I've got three now. So I'm not sure what the cover number two looks like, but I'll keep an eye out for that as well. Next, just uh, Ghost Rider. This is just run filler from uh, the, the 90s volume of Ghost Rider. It's uh, cool. Is this a... Uh, it's not a text cover. Not Jim Lee. Not sure who it is, but, uh, you know... It's a pretty cool Ghost Rider book. Happy to find that. And let's see. Next, we've got Homies number one. So this is the comic based on those vending machine toys that were popular in the late 90s and early 2000s. And I had no idea these existed. They were talking about these Homies books on uh, Tales from the Flip Side. Uh, they were going through toys that were selling. And then there was comics, these Homies comics they sell uh, for pretty good money, too. I found number two at a local con uh, back around uh, Halloween, and as soon as I listed that for sale on Mercari, it sold like within 20 minutes of me listing it. I had two people message me after I'd sold it, asking if I had any more. So these books are very popular, <laughs> apparently. So I was happy to find uh, number one, and then I got this variant cover for number one. This is kind of cool. It's got the uh, the vending machine on there, and it's got them in those little. Um, the bubble containers so that's pretty cool and then I found two copies of number four so I'm gonna put all these up for sale uh, and hopefully they sell sell just as quick as the uh, the other ones did so those were the last books I got from comic vault on Black Friday and then I also went to the awesome flea market in Shepherdsville the day after just to uh, see if they were having anything. A bunch of their vendors uh, closed up shop a few months ago so I was hoping some new vendors had opened up but unfortunately they hadn't. There's only basically two comic vendors there and I got all these from uh, one comic vendor. These were all a dollar a piece as well. Uh, his first book is Robotech 2 The Sentinels, book 4, number 6. Uh, again, I just picked this up. I know these um, from book four from the Sentinels, they're really hard to find in um, low print runs and people like to get them to complete their runs, so I've got this to flip. I can hopefully get about 30, 40 bucks for it, we'll see. Uh, next, we got uh, TMNT Adventures Special. This is from Spring 93. Again, this is just a run filler for my uh, TMNT Adventures collections. So anytime I find ones that I don't have for cheap, I will grab them. Next, we've got Stanley and his Monster 1 and Stanley and his Monster 2. Now, the reason I picked these up, these are from uh, Magic the Gathering artist Phil Foglio. That's how I became aware of him, at least. Uh, so, uh, I didn't know he did his own little mini series. This is a four issue mini, mini series from DC back in oh, February 93, it says. So, I found these first two issues and I had no idea he did these, but the art caught my eye. He's got a very distinctive style, especially on this this one on the right here. You can tell it's it's Foglio, so I was really excited to find those and pick those up. Next, got a, another quintessential 90s book. This is Spectre number 8. This is a glow-in-the-dark cover. Uh, I won't try to make it glow. Last time I did that with that Ghost Rider book, it didn't work, so... You just have to take my word for it. This is a uh, glow-in-the-dark cover for the Spectre. Next, you got uh, RoboCop 2 number 1. And I've got a couple of copies of RoboCop number 1, and this is RoboCop 2 number 1. This one was, I think this one was written by Frank Miller. And then I grabbed the cover because it looked cool, and you can see uh, Jim Lee 
either did the uh, the pencils or the inks on that. I'm not sure which one, um, but it's a cool cover nonetheless. And Jim Lee doing RoboCop, you know, gotta grab that. All right, next we've got Nemesis the Warlord. I had no idea about this book. I just grabbed it because the cover caught my eye, and it's uh, let's see, Sam Keith down there. I recognize this signature. And then you can kind of tell uh, the lady with the furry booty over here, she kind of looks like, uh, what's her name, Julie from the Max. I think that's the, the girl's name from the Max. You can kind of see that um, early influence, I guess, or early uh, stylization of what she was going to be in the Max when she was wearing her, like, you know, uh, barbarian outfit or whatever. So that was kind of cool. Um, I don't think this goes for anything, but, you know, strictly a cover by. And more, some more Sam Keith here. This is Marvel Comics Presents number 90. This is a cool Cable and uh, Ghost Rider cover. And it was a newsstand, so it's pretty cool. Let me open it up here to see if it's a flip cover. It, it is. Oh, it's cool. And it's got Wolverine looking intently at some lady. <laughs> it's kind of creepy, but whatever. I bought it for that cover. It's not like his... His cable's pretty cool. Alright, next we've got one, another one of these parody books. This is Laughing Gas Mutant Ninja Mutants. <laughs> another one of these TMNT parodies. Uh, it's got adolescent radioactive black belt hamsters in there. You know, preteen, dirty gene, kung fu kangaroos, all those guys. Uh, they've each got a little story in here, so I thought that was funny, so I picked it up. Uh, next, we got StarCraft number one. This is the first uh, StarCraft comic, I think. So, uh, I just grabbed this just because all the video game stuff's uh, starting to heat up. This one is not, but, you know, StarCraft's a really popular video game, so um, it might get there eventually, and if not, it was only a book. Next, we got James Bond Jr. number one. I picked this one up because uh, I remember watching this cartoon when I was a kid. Uh, this I think this was my first exposure to James Bond. I never watched any of the movies uh, before I started watching the cartoon. So the cartoon exposed me to Mr. Bond, and I always liked it when I was a kid, so I picked it up. Last book, might be my favorite one, is Married with Children 2099, number three. A beautiful uh, Star Wars homage. you got Al and Peg there on the cover, and then uh, Kelly and Bud over there. Kelly is 3PO, I guess. Bud is R2-D2. And Ed, of course, is uh, Luke. And Peg is doing a wonderful impression of Leia. Got the uh, the, the buns and everything, the hair buns on there. So uh, this was some ridiculous person is asking like $100 for this on eBay, I think. So uh, whatever. I don't know if it actually sells for that. But uh, this cover is hilarious. I love Married with Children. And uh, this is a pretty good homage cover, so I was happy to find this one for a buck. So that was my Black Friday haul, guys. Hope you guys found some good deals out there, and I will talk to you soon.